So good evening. Uh, my name is Clarence. I'm going to talk a little bit today about some early stage research that I'm involved in, looking at how to operationalize um, data from social media in a crisis situation, and particularly looking at these issues of uh, data verification and how much does accuracy matter in using this information. Um, so I first got involved in this space a little over a year ago uh, when I had the opportunity to participate um, and lead a research team, actually, in the Social Media and Emergency Management Conference, right? Um, and we were looking at uh, documenting the findings from a day of U.S. emergency managers talking about the issues that they were having using using social media tools for their day-to-day -day operations. One of the big concerns that we found in the final report was that there was a resistance at a higher level from people using or a willingness to use social media because of concerns about accuracy and reliability, and can we trust this data, essentially. So when you start to think about how do you move past that barrier, right, there's two ways. One, you can give people really good filters and really good data sets and say, hey, here, this data is 100% accurate, go ahead, use it, do what you're going to do. But another way to do this is maybe to concede the point up front and say, maybe your data set, sure, it's only 60 to 75% reliable, but if you incorporate that into, you say, your verified data, maybe you ultimately end up at better decisions than you would otherwise, right? And so when we think about this, we like to call this our kind of horseshoes and hand grenades hypothesis, right? So maybe the old saying goes, close only matters in horseshoes and hand grenades, but maybe it also matters in terms of crisis response and saving lives, right? Um, and so the way that we started to think about this problem was in a particular decision-making process. Uh, my background is operations research and in part transportation and logistics was looking at this emerging area of disaster relief routing and logistics, right? So you have resources in point A and you have a set of demand nodes. How do we optimally allocate those resources in a crisis situation, right? And so for exposition purposes here, um, I'm just going to walk through an example of how we started to engage this problem, right? So assume you have an earthquake or some type of disaster and coming out of that event afterwards, you have information of the traditional, say, verified kind and then also your new media and say, maybe unverified information. And so here we have my friend, uh, traditional Tom, and Tom is really only wants to use what he's always used. And so this is the only information that he's going to use to allocate his resources to go out and service the demand nodes, right? But then we also have a new guy on our staff, and I like to call him New Media Nate, right? And so Nate has come along, and he's kind of an upstart within the organization, um, and he's a really big fan of the work of, say, Humanity Road, and really is into, like, the Ushahidi platform, et cetera, and he thinks that, you know, we should just look at all of this data and make decisions using it all, right? And so this is essentially the, what they are looking, both looking at at the beginning, right? We have the green, the green squares, which are our verified demand nodes, and then we have a whole host of this new, new media, say, data that are unverified nodes. It could be inaccurate or accurate, right? And then so their, their decision problem is that they need to minimize the response time in servicing these nodes, right? And so... Again, we have some of these orange nodes, which could be inaccurate or accurate, and so we want to make the optimal decision. And essentially, this is the traveling salesman problem, which is a classic problem in operations research. And so this is actually what the, what the when you uncover the orange nodes, what it would look like, say, three months from now, right? So we have some inaccurate nodes and some accurate nodes, and we really only want to visit the blue and the green nodes, right? Um, so what we want to do is actually find the trade-offs between Tom's approach and Nate's approach in getting to the closest solution here, which is our hindsight tour, right? So this is the optimal tour. This is the solution to the traveling salesman problem, right? Um, so what Nate's approach, or I'm sorry, what Tom's approach would actually look like, Tom would say, okay, first we're going to visit only the green nodes. So we have one tour up front, and that's going to take us a certain amount of time. During that time period, we make this assumption that uh, we get information revealed to us as the time goes on, and so then we do a second tour, right? So our tours, we are only visiting the accurate nodes, but we actually have to make two tours. So Nate, he just says, well, let's visit, well, let's visit them all, right? Um, and, and so, sure, some of them are going to be inaccurate, but there's going to be trade-offs there in terms of losing time and having to cover ground again later. And what we want to do is understand in which situations is Nate's approach better and which situations is Tom's approach better, and maybe get to a point where we have some rules of thumb about this. Um, and so we've started to do some experimental and simulation analysis to really vary kind of if you, if you have a square of uh, an affected area, some demand nodes, we want to vary the accuracy and the verified request within that population, right? And so as you see here, we have a small affected area, low demand, and it's about 50-50, right? As, as we get closer, we, as we get more accurate data, obviously the new media approach where we want to do a fully uh, considered tour um, becomes better. But if you can see in the high demand case for a small affected area, we could actually get as low as 20% on the request accuracy and still do really well, right? So this has implications in terms of how we take in data, how we use the data that all of you guys are creating and, and, and filtering through these great platforms um, going forward. Um, 
So we've started the work initially, um, obviously still in a very kind of a, a theory phase, and what we want to do is actually we're interested in working with individuals out there and anyone here who would like to uh, do some case studies or provide us with some great data sets to work with. Um, so please send us an email and thank you.